Hello and welcome to a brand new video. You guys have not seen this account in a long time. It's the one I used for the Twisted Leagues a while back. I was basically turning it into a really rare PKN account, a Seracnus Crudgel White Knight PKN build. Yeah, something you guys have never seen before, but I have found something just way, way, way more interesting and way more game breaking than that. I've found a way to teleport from anywhere in the wilderness even. I'm chilling here at level 47 wilderness, pretty deep in multi. I'd usually be a bit scared with claws out here, but if I was sculled, I still would have no fear. This makes me pretty much fearless in the wild. I don't think anybody could even smite me. If there's a big massive clan, I can just instantly teleport out. Sounds a little bit broken, I know. I'm gonna show you that right now, and then I'm gonna explain what's going on and why this could be crazy. I'm gonna build a full series about this actually, because I just think it'll be pretty awesome. So let me show you this teleport, and you'll kind of laugh, but trust me, this is a pretty awesome teleport. Right, so here we go. Don't blink or you will miss it. Here's me teleporting out of level 47 wilderness. <laughs> now, some of you are watching this and probably think I'm joking. I am not joking. Sure, this teleport has a couple of drawbacks. I did die and lose all my items. I did just pretty much alk myself. I hit 70 damage in one game tick to myself, which means I don't need to run about at 1 HP and then top myself. 70 health is pretty high. So you're probably thinking this teleport's useless. It's got too many drawbacks. You can't bring out much items. You can't bring out the best strength gear. But claws are really, really powerful. A lot of people don't know that. I can just go out to anywhere in the wild. I can be at the Rev Caves, it can be at the Chaos Altar, it can be at Vedion, Callisto, anywhere that's multi. And I can just spec people out with no fear of clans. That is powerful. I'm going to show you how powerful it is in the rest of this video. But first off, you probably want to know how did I deal 70 damage to myself in one game tick. So I'm going to jump into that. But first, let's have a little instant replay of this here. 70 damage just boom <laughs> completely exploded so this is probably my greatest discovery in old school runescape i'm just going to call it now before you actually see how powerful it is but yeah let's jump into what i was looking for what i was trying to do and then how i discovered this so here we are back in the game i just changed my character back to a man it was a female from recruitment drive quest and I got a wee haircut on the go because it was pretty bald. But yeah, what was I trying to do and how did I discover this? Basically, I wanted to create an unsmiteable old school runescape account. And you're probably thinking that's impossible, you can be smited no matter what. But that's not actually true. Let's look at what smite actually is. Smite removes 25% of the damage dealt from your prayer points. Basically, if you get hit for a 20, you lose 5 prayer points. So if you're really low hit points and really high prayer, you could never be smited. Goes without saying. If somebody's only dealing like say 20 HP to you, because you only have 20 hit points, with smite they can only remove 5 prayer points. Now it gets a bit complicated because clans don't just smite you. Clans special attack you with that ancient mace and then it goes up from 25% to 125%. They get 1 to 1 from the ancient mace spec plus the 25% boost from having smite up. So then if they hit you for 20 damage, they remove 25 prayer points. So you might be thinking, surely you could just have a really low hit points account, maybe like 30, 40 HP, 99 prayer, and you would never get smited. I thought that as well, and that was what I was kind of looking into. But with some testing with the Ancient Mace, we found out two really strange things. It is the only melee weapon in the game that can't over hit damage. That means if you're sitting at like 1 HP and somebody special attacks you with the mace, the max they can roll is a 1, which is quite interesting. It means it's not like other melee weapons where they can spec and hit like a 30 and you'd still lose a couple of prayer points even though you only have 1 HP remaining. That's not how it works. But if about 20 people in a big clan specs you with the Ancient Mace at the same time, all of those ones will stack up and you will still lose all of your prayer points. So the initial plan of making a low HP high prayer account to spec people out in multi did not work. So I moved on to plan B. How could I get out of a really dangerous situation instantly? So I started gathering up all the items in the game that can do self-harm. There's only one I knew about that could actually finish me off and that is the orb from Major Arena Part 2. But I thought I'd give it a go with all these other items and see if I could find a way around it. I got all the rock kicks from Recipe for Disaster, I done a load of Watchtower to get the map to be able to collect these evil nightshades. Then I cooked a load of poisonous cram brams, they remove 5 hit points every time you eat them. Then I headed over to the Fermincan Isles, collected a load of these here beer tankards, brought them down and swapped them in for strange objects. These are pretty much just little explosives, you know. Then it was time to head over to G and test with some of these items I collected. I still planned to do the dig site quest, but I was going to do it a wee bit later on. So got out some of these here items, and this is where I made the big discovery. So just need to show you this. I had poisonous Karambrams, which remove 5 health 
just five health every single time you eat them and I took out some of these here cave nightshade and what I was going to do is just test combo eating a cave nightshade into poison crambram minus 15 and minus 5 it should be 20 damage stacked pretty easy also took out some strange objects to try them then you just light them up a little timer starts ticking down they have like a fuse whenever the fuse runs out if they're still in your inventory they'll deal a bit of damage wasn't sure how much damage that would be but it turns out I think it's two damage yeah so they're not much at all you know this clip's really confusing but I'm gonna try break it down for you guys because this were discovered this tactic of teleporting really so what I'm gonna try to do here in a second is combo eat a cave nightshade into poisonous crown bomb any sane person would assume this would be minus 20 damage I misclicked the first time but have a look this second time minus 15 it nulled out five damage there which is really strange i tried the other way around it worked perfect how i expected it to work but why did it null out that first piece of damage it just didn't make sense to me so i had to think about it and all these things in the inventory that shouldn't be able to kill me what they actually do is first off before they actually deal the damage is calculate your remaining hit points so a poisonous crambram checks your hp make sure it's above five because if it's lower than that it won't deal as much damage it won't finish you off and then it deals the damage so that first interaction if you mess up with it or if you change your hp before it deals that damage by combo eating it doesn't know where it is i'm gonna let you guys watch this one last one once more so i'm clicking on both the foods it's calculating my hp then it's dealing the damage that's basically what you expect it to happen but that null damage let me know that there's a tiny bit of a delay before that happens so if i find an item in the game that has a delay for example something i drop that has an animation before it deals the damage i'll be able to stack both pieces of damage on top of each other and hit my health down below zero which is what i want to do that's how this teleport works so let's jump over to the next part of the plan we completed a dig side quest and we unlocked this here explosive liquid so this here unidentified liquid you guys might remember from the quest if you drop this in the floor it actually deals 25 damage to yourself so all you need to do is collect full inventory of it here and if you stack that with poison crambrams you can deal 30 damage every single time to yourself there's also a delay between you click and drop your character actually placing it on the floor and it exploding so this will stack with a poison crambram now the interesting thing about this liquid is it doesn't actually just have to deal 25 damage if you run over to the dig site and use this potion on this dude to get it identified it will then deal 35 damage if you take this dust have it identified as well and then add it into the potion it goes up now from 35 to 45 damage if you add ground charcoal 55 damage and if you add the roots from the dig site quest if you complete the full chemical mix from the dig site quest when you drop this black potion it deals 65 damage so here's the second last one and as you can see you drop it bit of a delay then a 55 and here's the big dog the final potion chemical compound from dig site quest if you drop it there's a bit of a delay and then 65 damage that's really cool that there's a delay it means this all comes together with a crown bomb so now we're going to head out and use this teleport and see what we can do in the wild with it so to get started i traded over a rev cave teleport a bit of cash for supplies and some dragon claws from a main i really hope i don't lose these dragon claws because they are like probably 20 percent of my bank or something but we head out to the rev caves and before i get in here i need to warn you all i am a massive noob at pecan i've never really done pecan since like maybe 2010 or something crazy haven't done it since 07 came out really i've done a bit in dead man mode but that's more just poking people anyway this here is so good on paper that i might make a full pvp series i might build a brand new account 60 attack 90 plus strength one defense and then low hp i'll have to use like the blast furnace or something to keep my hp low while training the strength and 99 prayer and just come out here and rush like all the venezuelans over and over and over this is my first time out here found a target i found like this skulled world he's not quite skulled oh he is i yeah he's skulled so here we go first target first spec completely smashes him second spec finishes him off that was super easy we've already got a kill i did panic a wee bit and i have overlooked a massive part of this i didn't click the crown bram i didn't kill myself but i'm so low in health now that i don't think i can be smited tried to loot some of this stuff and then a boy killed me and this here's the problem how do i loot all of this stuff whenever i kill people i might have to do the same thing as like kemp q done on his 10 hp iron man where he brought a different account to loot yeah i think i'll have to bring out level three or maybe bring out my main with a bulwark just some way of picking up all the loot i get but first attempt not even on a custom built account just on my old like pure 500k peak head in about what was that 30 seconds so we can just pick another teleport out from the bank and head out and do that again 
I didn't even make it to the revs. I was running down, I was about to put my recorder on and spec some boy out, and some dude just attacked me. Turned around, two spec him. We have another inventory of loot. Oh, or the peak air. Might just hop world and then I'll show you how much we've got. Yeah, he's following. Is he? I'll just quick hop. Just to be safe. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a problem leaving the wild. Like that boy turned around and started attacking me with range. But that is a nice wee pile of loot there. There must be about three, four hundred K. Anyway, get my claws off and I'm gonna just run down and teleport out here, I think. We've already made like 900k in about five minutes, but I was running about looking for people to spec and have a look at these here. They're like really strange green dragon bots. If I go to attack them, they teleport away. Even if you don't attack them, I'll just run over beside this one and you'll see. They must detect when a player gets too close to them, so I'm not even clicking attack yet and he's teleported away. How crazy is that? I don't know what way these things are coded, but they are 100% bots because all of them do it. If you get too close or if you right click on them and hit attack, they just teleport away. Like there, I'm not close enough, but there he teleports. Pretty strange. Find this boy at Venonatus, and usually I wouldn't want to claw spec here because in multi it's pretty dangerous, but I can do it right here because I'm not really risking anything. Unfortunately, my claws didn't come through for me that time, but anybody with those like wilderness weapons, carries loads ether, they're always about a 500k plus kill, so I'm definitely going to be getting some of them with this method in the future, you know? Another place I wanted to test this out was the Chaos Temple. So this place is multi when you're inside. Loads of people train their prayer out here. So because multi, nobody really uses claws, but I'm not too scared of bringing my claws out here because if a clan does show up, I can just teleport back to safety. So I'll be able to kill a load of people out here, train my prayer up pretty much for free, which is awesome. That boy just had big bones, but most people have dragon bones or are better, you know? This has been the most fun I've had in Old School RuneScape in a long time. It's just so funny, you'd be running out here wearing no gear, people do not expect it. They even stand one tile away, right beside you, you just whip on the claws, spec them out if it fails, and on this account it is going to fail quite a bit of the time. It still like wrecks them, I could very easily kill a load of people with this method, but on a pure with 99 strength, it'll just have a much higher success rate. If I fail, no problem at all, I just teleport straight back out, grab another Reverend, teleport, and I'm back here in a couple of minutes. This account also has Faldor teleport respawn. If it was doing it properly, I'd buy the Wilderness one, the Edgefield teleport, because it's really close to a bank. It's only 5 mil. I'd make that back in probably an hour, being realistic with this method, because every one of these Rev people you kill is 300k plus, pretty much. And you get the odd one that's well over a mil. I'm going to show you his two back-to-back -back trips. This account is by no means perfect for it. The HP is above 70, so it's too high. It's not built for DPS and it's a bit too high combat, it means all these protectors down here can attack me. But I think to do this perfectly, to have a flawless build here, I'd need a pure, one defense pure with 60 attack, really high strength, really low hit points, really really high prayer, I'm chatting like 99 prayer, just in case a DC or something, I want to make sure I'm 100% safe. You'd need to have the edge fill teleports and you'd need to have one of those spec things in your house so you can replenish your prayer. But you'd also need a low level defense tank for looting, so there's quite a big build here. What I've been doing in this account is just being in the house party worlds, hop back in, renew my spec, come straight back out like one and a half, maybe two minutes later, and I can just kill somebody else. This one here got two kills back to back within three or four minutes, and the first one was only like, I think 200k, he must have just came out. This second one here was over a mil, and... I got really lucky. All of the people protecting this boy were too high level to attack me. You can see them there in the top right of the screen. So I picked up all the loot and I was able to teleport out. I think what they do is like call people from other worlds. So they have all CB or all combat brackets covered. But it just takes them a while to get there. So those two kills combined were about 1.15 mil. About 1.2 mil. And we walked away with close to 900k with just that one kill really that I looted. So yeah, there could be so, so much money using this method. You could probably make like 20 or 30 mil per hour if you built that perfect account, if you had the looter. There's a lot of ifs, but even without those ifs, you could kill a load of people using this method. It is quite dangerous. I do not recommend you guys trying it until I've like perfected it. Or if you have a build that is low HP and really high prayer, then you'll probably be pretty safe. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's very different from anything I've done before, but I think it's the start of something. I think I'm going to build that there are two builds that I was talking about. I want to make a full series called maybe Unsmiteable or something. It'll just be me claw specking people out in really, really risky places. So yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I will catch all of you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.